If you look around the High Weald today, with its small fields, woodlands and gill streams in their steep, narrow valleys, it's hard to imagine it was once the centre of a busy, noisy, thriving iron industry that lasted for over 2,000 years. But the High Weald had all the raw materials needed for smelting iron. Iron ore, wood and water. This film shows archaeologists demonstrating how the earliest iron makers would have extracted iron from stone. What we have here is an iron stone. This is an iron ore and this has come from high up in the high weald and we've dug this out of the ground and what we need to try and do now is to find out whether we've got any iron in it. And the best way for people in the past to tell if there's any metal in a rock is to heat it up. So by putting this in a fire and baking it really really hot we will be able to discover whether we've got any metal inside it. So if we take it over to our fire, put it in a fire for maybe up to a whole day and cover the fire to keep the heat in and also to stop the rocks exploding everywhere because these rocks will literally blow up and hot bits of rock go everywhere. If the rock changes colour and goes this nice purple colour, that's going to be a very, very good sign that there's iron in here because it is the iron that will actually change colour. The next step will be to then break this up and put it in a furnace, which is the thing that is actually going to turn this roasted iron into our finished iron that we can make tools from. So here's our lump of iron that we've roasted in the iron ore that we've roasted in the fire and we're now going to break this up and have a look inside it. So if we put it on a, on a rock, this is a what's called a quern, which is actually used for grinding flour, but it's also a perfect shape for catching the bits when we, when we break them. And very quickly we can see that the rock that was first very, very hard has been made a lot softer. And looking inside it, we can see a lovely range of colours. Where we've got this purple, reddy brown colour, this shows us that all the hot air in the fire has got in there and turned this into a form that we can then put in our furnace. So if we take these bits and gently tap them, because we don't want it as a dust, we want bits this size are absolutely perfect for putting in. And these, when we put lots of them in to the furnace with charcoal and get them, get them really red hot, are going to give us our iron. What's happened with the iron when we've heated it up is that it's all become magnetic and so a very good way of actually testing whether we've got a lot of iron in here is to see whether a magnet will actually pick up these lumps of rock. If we have our first lump that hasn't been roasted, the magnet doesn't react to it at all. But after it's been roasted, the magnet picks up all the bits, showing that we've really changed the iron in our iron ore and put it into a state where we can now get the iron out in the furnace. For the last day or so, for the last 24 hours, we've had a team of people heating up our furnace with our iron ore and our charcoal in it. We've just broken this open and we've got a huge hot lump of metal and other material. What we're doing now is letting this cool down we're going to chip away all the bits that we can clearly see are not iron on it and then we're going to reheat it and hammer it and drive it into a ball, uh, a big sphere of iron that we can then work to make our tools with. What we've got here are a range of tools that have been made from iron and these are all exact replicas of original early tools that would have been used in Sussex two or three thousand years ago. So we have, for example, an adze. To make this, we took our bar of iron, we punched a hole through the top so we could get our wooden handle in, and we then hammered this out very thin and shaped the edge so that it's razor sharp for cutting. If you are interested in finding out more about the wheeled and iron industry, or how the high wheeled landscape was changed by iron, look out for the East Sussex Archaeology and Museums Partnership Recreations of History at special events during the year.
by iron. Look out for the East Sussex Archaeology and Museums Partnership Recreations of History at special events during the year.